Hello guys! I am just a random fangirl and welcome back to my channel! So, this time we'll be reacting to a series of unfortunate events, season 3, episode number 5, if I'm correct. And we are so close to the season finale, so, so close. There are just so many things that we still need answers to, there are so many questions, there are a lot of characters in problems! <laughs> and I'm going to be so mad if anything happens to them. And by them, I mean, you know, Huki and uh, Fiona, his sister. Frida, Fiona. It was something with an F. So I'm going to be so mad if something happens to them. Like I have, I have, I have, I have, I have adopted them by this point. I want nothing bad to happen to them. But then again, that same, that that that, that same feeling goes for a lot of characters. And I've said it before. I don't think that this show is one where our main characters are safe. We've seen it time and time again, characters dying in the most gruesome ways. Um, and yeah, just... Yeah, yeah, that happens. So I am really, really, really worried because we have now entered the arc of the season finale and I think that any character is fair game. I am not sure how to feel about the bottlers and their, you know, chances of getting alive out of this. I really don't know how I feel about their chances because part of me really wants to think, well, they are the main characters and that means that they, um, they are probably not going to die. But at the same time, I am just like, yeah, they are the main characters, so that means that terrible things happen to them. Misfortune after misfortune, and they are just not safe. So I could think that, I don't know, maybe, 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 I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it will end up being like um, an open ending, that's the best I can hope for, an, an ambiguous ending. Um, but I'm not really sure how safe those children are mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things because things are just really, really bad for them most of the time. And that sucks, but that's how it is. So I am just really worried. <laughs> I just really don't know what to, what to feel and what to think. And I'm not really sure about how... how to process my complicated emotions about these um how this season finale is going to go because i i, I just because of all the all of the other season finales and about just the show in general i don't think it's going to be a happy ending i don't think that there are many happy things going forward so that just That just leaves me really worried for all of the characters. Like, <laughs> I love Count Olaf. I think that he is an amazing villain. And I just really, really love how eccentric and terrible, but also really interesting character he is. And at the same time, like I've said since the beginning of the show, I love him, but I hate him. And I love to hate him, and I hate to love him. That's basically my feelings about Olaf. I think that he is just really, really great. And because he is a great villain, I am terrified of him. I am terrified of when, what, what he could possibly do. Because even though... I don't know. That character, Count Olaf, is just filled with contradictions. He's ignorant. But cultured and he's stupid but really intelligent and he knows he knows shit but at the same time he knows so much and that makes him such an amazing character i just ev 
every episode I am hoping that we learned a little bit more about him and because he's an amazing villain I'm always terrified of him I want to see him I love seeing him in the show because he's just such he's a he has such an aura such a persona that is just captivating to watch and at the same time it's like watching an accident um, a train accident a car accident unfold right before your eyes you are watching it and you can't do anything to stop it and you cannot look away so I just love this show I just love this show I want to rewatch this show so badly when I finish watching this season because I want to pick up on the details and maybe some clues on the first episodes and be like oh yeah that makes a lot of sense I rewatched the first couple of episodes uh, about a month two months ago two months ago and I realized so many things and I had so many questions and I think that I told you about that like how math is not mathing and just how many questions I have about the organization and now now I have so many questions about this organization because now we have entered the realm of knowing that there are not just good people and bad people that there are a lot of gray areas and <clears throat> there are no organization who is completely good or completely bad um, and I just I just love that I love complicated subjects complicated characters i love the complexity in shows and i am really looking forward to knowing a little bit more but because we are so close to the season finale i'm not sure how many of that question of those questions are going to actually get answers because i have a feeling that this is going to be an ambiguous ending so i am really excited I really want to watch it and at the same time I am not ready to watch it I don't feel like I'm ready I am not I don't I don't feel like I'm ready to either say goodbye to this story or to know how it ends I'm not ready and I think that that is because this is a, such a good show I've never seen something quite like this something so self-aware but in an amazing way i never seen anything like this and i am loving it so fucking much i am terrified of it ending and i i desperately want to see how it ends i have so many complicated feelings because i want to watch it and i don't want to watch it because once you watch it that's it you can only watch a TV show or a movie or read a book once for the first time you only get to experience all of those things as blindly as you can once and then sure you can revisit the story and you can enjoy it in a different way but you never get the feeling of you watching it for the first time that's also why i just love doing reactions because i feel like i'm sharing a really special experience with you guys because i don't know stories and tv shows and movies are just such an important part of my life and of my identity and I think that sharing that experiences with other people are just amazing things so anyway all of that to say I am really excited for this um, I think that there are two episodes left right like this one and another one this final arc of the show I am not ready but I'm never going to be ready, so 
If you're watching this on YouTube, this is going to be a highlighted reaction. But if you want to catch the full length, uncut, unedited reactions, I am going to leave you my Patreon account in the description box down below and feel free to check it out. We are a bunch of episodes ahead in there as well. And I think that's it. So without further ado, let's just jump into this reaction, shall we? The Hotel. Of course, yeah. <laughs> they are hard to please. Vegetable. Oh, no, honey, it is not. I don't know. I'm not really sure how it counts as. Ooh, amazing. Honey, you show them. <laughs> they grow up so fast. Love this messed up phone family. Well, they escape. Yeah, there you go, honey. I just cannot express how much I love this messed up phone family. Count Olaf is just so done with Carmelita. <laughs> Little girls are terrifying. Yeah, yeah, they can be really mean. But Carmelita is a whole other thing. Can I just say that I love that Carmelita returned to the show? Because I thought that she was an amazing character the first time that we saw her. About, yeah, a season ago. She was at the beginning of the second season. And I just love the way that they reintroduced the character. I, I just, I just love it. I love this whole dynamic so much. And... As I said before, Olaf is, I think... <sighs> wait, wait, because I may I may regret saying that. Um... <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Olaf may be my favorite character. Now, don't get me wrong, I love all of the other characters. I do. But I don't know what I found about Olaf so fascinating. And I just can't help but feel for him because there are these times where he has this somber, monotor, mon monotone, um, melancholic way about himself and there are some other times where he's just a messed up really lost kid that has done so many terrible things and i need to know why i need to know the answers And there are, like I said in the intro before, there are so many things that are so complicated and so contradictory about Count Olaf. I just can't help but root for him in some way or another. Like, I don't root for him to kill my favorite characters. I don't. But at the same time, I kind of root for him to, you know, show to his mentors that he is a good villain, you know? Or for this messed up found family. Or I just feel bad when people just turn on him because, yeah, he's a terrible human being. And his lackeys, all of them deserve the way better of a boss. But at the same time, I just can't help but feeling sorry for him. Because damn, even when you are an evil person, that has to hurt. That has to hurt to be 
rejected and be betrayed all over again because I am really sure that something happened something really big for him happened in the past for him to turn bad you know and I'm not saying that he's not bad he is most definitely bad he again I don't want to say bad because I don't want to put out just those labels on people like I don't usually just say oh yeah this is good and this is bad I know that there are a lot of nuances and there are a lot of grays but in the gray scale he is really close to black <laughs> so like simplifying the terms I know that he is a bad character I know that he has done terrible things he has killed so many of my favorite characters I have not forgotten and I have not forgiven Monty instead because Montgomery Montgomery he was my baby I I I knew him for two episodes and I loved him. I just can't tell why or how I bonded so much with that character, but I just, he was one of my favorite guardians. Him and probably um, Esme's husband. Yeah, probably those two were my favorite ones. But I really cared for all of them. So yeah, I just have so many contradictory feelings for Count Olaf and I just think that those feelings are why he is my favorite character. And then we have of course the Baudelaire's and the Quagmire's and the Volunteers and Hooky because I love Hooky. I think that he is on the top 5 of my favorite characters because I love that man to death. <sighs> And yeah, basically all of this to say that I, as I've always said since the beginning of the show, I love to hate Count Olaf and I hate to love him. But I think that that's normal to feel when you have really great complex characters with so many contradictions on them. So... I don't know, I think that Count Olaf may be one of my favorite villains. And I am one of those people, of those weird people, that just root for the villains most of the time. Like, I'm watching a movie or a show and I'm like, yeah, that villain seems to be about right. And uh, yes, I usually am a sucker for villains. I love them, I love villains, I love antagonists. I love them, I don't know why. Um, but yeah, so... Yeah, this actually made me realize that Count Olaf is my favorite character. Not to say, again, that I don't love all of the other characters, because I do. I could kill for the bottle layers. I could kill to see them safe and to see them happy and to see them succeeding. And I have grown to love Lemony Snicket so fucking much again. And... And Jax, oh my god, I loved him, and Olivia, I love them to pieces, and I love Esme, and how she's always on fashion, she's always slaying, and I love Carmelita because she is a monster, and I love her, and I love Hooky and his sister, because they are precious to me, they are in my heart. And the Quagmires, and the Guardians, and the Volunteers, I just love everyone. <laughs> But yeah, I think that I've come to the realization that for now, I'm not really sure if there is that that, that is going to change. Count Olaf is my favorite character. I am not really rooting for him against the bottle layers because I want the bottle layers to be happy. But I am rooting for him to show his mentors that, you know, he can do better. And I am generally rooting for him as a character. It, it is weird to root for a character, but not really root for a character. It's a weird mix of emotions, but yeah. So yeah, interesting. <laughs> I love this so much. Esme <laughs> just looks amazing. <laughs> well <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that we can trust her That doesn't mean that She's not going to die, though Okay 
Shit. Shit. Damn. That is a good lection. <sighs> okay. Oh shit. I'm not really sure what to think. How do we know? Who is this? Let me just watch the sequence again because I don't know. Maybe I'm thinking way too much. Maybe this is Frank. <laughs> but oh. Are they going to make me root for them and then kill them? That's fair. <laughs> that sounds like a healthy relationship. <laughs> Damn. Damn. So that was Ernest. What's that mean? Hi, babe. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, so. So we know that there are two brothers, right? And she said, uh, you should trust Frank because he's trustworthy. But then there's the other brother that's, like, not trustworthy. And that he's going to try to stop you. And Frank is going to try to help you. But then we know that she is in some sort of relationship like they seem to be having a baby together with the other brother that she told us not to trust so that means that she's untrustworthy as well or or not because i i don't know like did she do that to be i don't know like why like okay i don't know i don't know it doesn't seem like, I don't know. Okay, so she said, <laughs> this is the brother you can trust. And this is the brother that, brother that you shouldn't trust. Uh, but then we know that he has a relationship with the brother that we shouldn't trust. But if she was actually helping the brother that we shouldn't trust. Then she would have just said, oh yeah, trust Ernst and then don't trust Frank. But she didn't. So I'm really wondering what her motives are. And then we know that they want the sugar bowl. But I'm not really sure. I don't think that they are like, I. maybe they want the sugar bowl for an, a whole other thing. Not really... 
having to do with BFD or with the other with you know the man with no beer and the beer with no man <laughs> or whatever <laughs> the man and the woman that you know that are Olaf's mentors <laughs> or with Olaf I think that they are their own thing and I'm not really sure what they want with the sugar bowl I am really curious about why all of these people want the sugar bowl I really want that mystery to be solved because what the hell is in that sugar bowl and then Laman is naked up here and he's fresh out of the dead and he's asking for a ride and now I'm really confused with all of these things like what <laughs> what is going on okay let me just rewatch that segment once again just to make sure that I'm not missing out on who is who and who to trust and what the hell is going on the Hotel de Numar. I'm one of the managers. Frank or Ernest? Exactly. I'm happy that you're here, even though one of you is unusually Damn. short because we're unusually shorthanded. This way, please. The job Damn. of the concierge is to give our guests everything they ask for. When they ring, you volunteer. What do those numbers mean? There can't be 999 rooms in this hotel. That's an interesting question. Do you know what they mean? Sir, some luggage arrived in a taxi, but the driver said the guests won't get here until Thursday. Thursday? Excuse me, concierges. He says nice. Do you think that was Frank? He used the word volunteer, or maybe it was a code. Everything he said sounded like know. a code. Ah, you must be our new concierge. Welcome to the Hotel de Numan. I'm one of the managers. Are you Frank or Ernest? I am. You're just in time. We're anticipating a large number of people oh, God. on Thursday. Do you know why? We think so. Can you tell me? That's an interesting question. That's a smart answer. It's hard to know who you can hmm. trust in a hotel lobby. There are countless wicked people in this world, so it follows that sooner or later, some of them will check into a hotel. Sir. Or maybe he is Frank. I don't know. Murderers. Excuse me, concierges. I don't know who Frank is. It had to be Ernest. The part about wicked people sounded like a threat. Unless it was no, Frank. No, I don't know. Warning. I'm already confused. How are we supposed to find anyone in this hotel? Damn. Answer that question. Finding someone in the Hotel de Numan is as easy as finding a book in the library because the Hotel de Numan is not organized like a hotel at all. It's organized like a library. Well, a library organizes knowledge according to a numeric classification system. That's right. All guests at the Hotel de Numan are placed in rooms according to where they would be shelved in a library. But anyway, oh, that is nice. You know the library catalog by heart. Maybe that is Frank. I don't know. Guests associated with the healthcare industry. Three thirty-two wow. financial economics. That bell doesn't have a number. That's our rooftop sunbathing salon. Huh. People who sunbathe usually aren't interested in library science, so they're not too picky about location. Three bells, ah, three That rooms. is not true. You can't be in three places at once. You'll have to split up, Baudelaire's. You know our names. Are you hmm. Frank or Ernest? That's an interesting question. I don't know! <laughs> Your assignments await. I think that is Ernest. I don't know who is who. I am it's just impossible. as confused as they are. A person to be in three places at once, unless of course that person is viewing a television program. A person viewing a television program does not have to choose between seeing Sonny's mysterious meeting huh. on the third floor. Oh, they am. I hope with that is with Hucky. Strange conspiracy on the sixth floor. They am. Okay, so maybe that's Olaf. And Violet's dangerous dilemma in the rooftop sunbathing salon. And maybe that is Esme. I see all three of these things, just not at the same time. Yeah. So I'm guessing he's going. Okay, no, I don't know. Ha. Yippee ki yay, mateys! I'm a ball playing cowboy, superhero, soldier, pirate. Wow, good for you. She's been exploring her tomboy side. She's adorable. As the vice principal of True Flock. Oh my God! Was always an adorable girl, and now. She's an adorable tomboy. Some girls find tomboy to be an insult. Of course you do. Carmelita and a harpoon gun. Yep. This is what I signed up for. Who is this? Is it Frank? Excuse me, sir. Maybe he's Ernest. Is there a problem? A guest on the roof asked for something, but I don't think I should give it to her. The job of the concierge is to give the guests exactly what they asked for. Giving a harpoon gun to Carmelita Spatz would be wrong. But not giving it to her would be suspicious. Mm. Yeah. VFD is aware of Miss Spatz's intentions and we've already taken them into account. Sometimes what seems wrong is really part of a larger plan. Can I trust you, concierge? Can you trust him? If I can trust you. The clock, a 
a lot. If the hotel then miles, the stuff of I don't know. I think that I was earnest. Sure means very famous for being very loud. The noise it makes sounded a lot like a word, and that word described Violet Baudelaire. She prepared to carry a harpoon gun to the rooftop sunbathing salon. I'm pretty sure that was Ernest. But wow. Ooh. So now we're going to see Klaus? Okay, so maybe he's going to see Count Olaf and someone else? Ah, hi, babe! I rang two minutes ago and it's an emergency. Perhaps. How do you know my name? It's on your name tag. Well, that makes sense. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But Esme Squalor. Of course you are. Mm. Love isn't the love of my life. It's definitely not a cover story. Fire of my love. Ha! 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 <laughs> He's gone. Okay. He's so anxious. How long do we have to keep this act up? There are enemies in this hotel. We have to make them think that we're a happy couple on vacation if we want to help the Baudelaire's. That's what J.S. said in that telegram. Yeah, I trust in him. I trust in him. But he's a little bit useless. But I love him. Letting them go was the biggest mistake of my life. And I Don't beat yourself up, babe. The doctor nearly cut off their heads. Hmm. We just have to wait till Thursday. That's when all these unfortunate events will be over and I can go back to ah. the real love of my life. Esme? The support group for people ah. who have escaped horrible partners. Oh, he good for you, babe. Too, but he couldn't be here. He's busy at his lumber mill. Oh my god! <sighs> well, I have someone too. Mm. She also. So is it going to be Sir or I? I hope. I hope that. You know. I love this. I love this. I love this. I love that we are getting to see all of these different characters that I come to care about and love and I love that we are getting to see more of them and that you know they are kind of thriving on their own even with all of the trauma that <laughs> Count Olaf and Esme and Carmelita caused to them and I am so worried for them because I don't think that anyone that appears in this show is safe so I am so so hyped for whatever other characters we may be seeing because that is great like i don't know i don't know there are so many characters that they could reintroduce to the story that is great that is great and that is awful because i am so worried for them but good for them you know it seems like babs is you know holding on and being her usual self, but apparently she's also trying to help the bottle layers, so that is awesome for her. And I, I, I love that the other guy is also trying to help and has escaped successfully, or kind of successfully. Um, um, you know, an abusive relationship. So, and now apparently. You know, he might be with the other guy. Because, let me just rewind a little bit so I can read. Um, let me just... Ah, I can't find it where, 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 when, when he said it. But I, I would love to see all of those other characters, and good for him. Like, actually, Esme treated him like kind of really, really bad. So I'm happy that he found a partner that actually cares about him. That is, that is great. Good for him. Good for him. I love to see all of these characters again. I love this, and I am so worried. And I want to see what Hook is up to. If he is going to be the one reuniting with Sunny, I'm going to lose my fucking mind, okay? Because I love their relationship so much. Asika. Well, well, well. Ah! What do we have here? Is that blood? Oh no. 
Please don't kill them. I fear I'm overdressed. Ha. Huh. It's blood. Mm. Of course it is. <laughs> oh my god. Ah, there you are, concierge. I have an important job for you. I need you to help me hang this from the window of room 598, but we must be careful. It's so sticky that anything it touches becomes instantly trapped. Is it flypaper? Yes, although our problem is not flies, it's birds. You want me to hang flypaper out of the window of a hotel room to trap birds? The sugar Seems bowl. Strange. Sometimes the sugar strange. bowl. It's really part of a larger plan. Can I trust you, concierge? The sugar bowl, right? If I can trust you. Yeah, Esme and him are looking for the sugar bowl because of the birds. As you know, the noise made by the clock in the lobby of the Hotel Denimar sounded a lot like a word. This word described Klaus Baudelaire as he helped hang a strip of bird paper outside the fifth floor. Out more? This file is more <laughs> than a collection of esoteric documents chronicling the unhappy lives of several children. No. When taken together, it forms a complete history of injustice as demonstrated by a wicked villain, his treacherous girlfriend, and various well-meaning yet ineffectual authority figures who help him intentionally yeah. or unintentionally along the way. Is Paul actually being helpful? I call it the complete history of injustice or odious lusting after fortunes. Oh. That is good. Mr. Pope, this is a shocking development. I promise to keep that file safe or my name isn't Jacques Snicket, a pompous do-gooder who is definitely not dead. This isn't the file. <laughs> Beg your pardon. This is just the index. The <laughs> file was too big for my briefcase. It's being delivered wow. by another client who requested the same materials. In fact, you both have the exact same initials. J.S. <gasps> Damn. Larry. Your waiter. I'm seeing you here. <laughs> I forgot your milk. But it's on that, that I'll get it from the chef. Odd service. Hotel restaurants. <laughs> oh, this, this is great. That seems so interested in the Baudelaire orphans. Oh, We're not going to get up. Yeah. Baker client confidentiality. Pretend of your life depended on it. Oh, Things poor Bo. We thought. How soon before JS arrives? The real JS, not that imposter in the dining room. Tonight, and the package will be arriving as well. But our enemies are watching the skies. If they intercept the delivery, we will all be eating crow. Crow is tough to eat. I hope we have uh, sugar. Especially if there are mushrooms on the menu. Ooh, that, those codes! Those codes! My schemes, and also my lunch. Oh, you haven't ha. even tried the curry. It's way ha. too spicy. Olaf, you lack more than an appreciation for subcontinental cuisine. You lack morals and ethics. And back up! Where are your associates now? Where are yours? Oh, oh. I killed them all. Oh. You can wear a fake mustache. You can rent a tuxedo. Is it rented? I stole it. You'll never of be course. the man Jacques Snicket was. Oh. So I'm not going to be cooked alive in curry. Oh. Did it sound like one? Yes, it did. Well, good it was. You'll see about I it. love this. Frank, would you please escort this villain off the premises? It is not Frank. I think you mean Ernest. Yippee-ki-yay. yippee ki -yay. No, Larry, no. Don't tell me they're going to kill off Larry! Unhand me, you cretins! You cads! You manhandling imposters! It's an insult! It's an outrage! This is no way to treat a waiter! I'm sorry it has to end like this. A little tete a tetes have been fun, but this rivalry, like this sauce, has simmered far too long. Do you expect me to talk? No, Larry, your waiter. <gasps> I expect just... you to boil. Oh! I hate this, but I love this. <laughs> I knew that it was us. Awesome. clean only. It's important to keep this room. Sunny locked the laundry room door. Frank gave her the lock, and the package is safe. But if it was Ernest, then it's not. No, it wasn't Ernest. Maybe we do. What are both sides of the schism after? The sugar bowl. The sugar, sugar bowl. bowl. Yeah. Yes. Yes, you can take that to room three forty-seven, please. Civil <gasps> procedures and courts. Justice, just. So grown up and sunny. <gasps> I see you're still a biter. You recognize us. I care about you children deeply. I would recognize you. This is making you me anyway. emotional. What are you doing here? Well, after that fraud of a wedding, I could.
couldn't forgive myself for letting you down. So I decided to set things right. I went looking for you. Next <gasps> up, Lousy Lane. I Next love her. Lake She's Lake amazing. Next stop, the burnt remains of Poultryville. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Dark Avenue. Village of foul devotees. Ah. Next stop, the hinterlands. The burnt remains of Heimlich Hospital. The burnt <laughs> remains of Caligari Carnival. And the Mark Main Mountains. Oh! Hi, babe! But everywhere I went, you were already gone. Then how did you find us? I had some help from a very strange book. Devil that she had organization that was <gasps> everything fighting the fires of the everything world. is coming yeah. together. Exactly. Everything is coming they together. To help you too. So what did you do? Well, I think we should sit down for this part. So fulfilling, so satisfying to see everything, everything, everything going full circle. You know, it would be amazing if the owners actually could live with her because. You know that first episode where they, where they were like, <laughs> you know, and she seemed like such a great option to live with. And she was so excited and then, you know, the whole things of unfortunate events happened. But to find, to find out that she was helping them. All of this time and sorry I got emotional I really got emotional and it's just oh god sorry oh it would just so be so beautiful you know to see count a laugh behind bars rotting in jail his hench people nowhere around But there's no happy endings. Not here and not now. This tale is all horrors and woes. She might dream that justice and peace win the day, but that's not how the story goes. That's how I'm feeling right now. That's how I'm feeling because I don't think that that is going to happen. It would be so beautiful to see all of this story come full circle. All of these characters together and Poe actually being useful for once and to see justice win the day and as much as I fucking love Count Olaf and I think that he's amazing in a creepy horrible way this is a series of unfortunate events and I don't think that that is going to happen I don't think that they're actually going to get their happy ending living with Justice, Justice Strauss. I would love them to. I would really, really love them to. But we know how this story goes. And I can't bring myself to watch it. To see that their lives and their hopes and their dreams crushed again. If this was happening, if this this scene was happening in the last ten minutes of next episode, I would be like, you know what? Maybe, maybe, maybe justice will win the day. Maybe good things can happen but it's happening on the first episode of a two-parter and as I said before I think that the best we can hope for is an ambiguous ending and I love this woman so much and I love so many of the characters. So it's really hard to watch.
God damn it, we just lost Larry. <sighs> Sorry, I'm I'm just I just I'm just too emotional. <sighs> so I'm back. I am not less nervous, but I'm back. <laughs> I couldn't finish watching this episode yesterday because a lot of things happened, so I had to divide into parts for me. Um, I am still very, very, very much nervous, but I feel like I'm ready to watch this episode, I think. <laughs> I am just so completely nervous. I'm sorry if I am... Um, if I... Um, I'm speaking a little bit weird because I... I bit on my on my like lips but in the inside part I'm not really sure how how you do it and it's just really bugging me to speak and it hurts my whole mouth so yeah it, it just happens sometimes when I sleep so I hope that it'll be um, better in a couple of days but yeah so if I if I speak weirdly or funny or something, it's because of that. I will try to enunciate better. But yeah, so let's just do it because if I don't do it now, I never will. So, okay. It's fine. It's going to be fine. Different from all because this story. If you could forgive me. Parents, we thought it would be fun to press a bunch of the buttons at the same time. Father said when you do that, you never know where you'll end up. Let's see where we end up. Okay, the that's an basement. interesting idea. That's where the laundry room is. The elevator isn't stopping. <clears throat> there must be a sub-basement. Okay. Looks like a library card catalog. Maybe you so can find some answers. Either the paste is still wet. And the tea is still hot. Kid, is that you? <gasps> You're not Kith. No. And you're not Frank. And you're not Ernest either. No. Because the Denimal brothers aren't twins. They're triplets. They're triplets. Kit told me that you A were lot of twins. triplets. My name is Dewey Denouma. I'm pleased to meet you. Why didn't Kit tell us about you? My existence is secret, which suits me. That makes sense. My work is secret too. You see, the Hotel Denouma is not just organized like a library. It is a library? Oh my god, the tunnels! It is a library. Okay, okay, so we know that we can trust him. Okay, that makes sense. Math is mathing now. That makes sense. Daddy He's not my neither pet. Go to land. <laughs> oh my god! You've lost your associates. I never needed them anyway. Oh, All babe. I need is the Baudelaire fortune and the three phrases to open the BFT lock. Even if you open it, you'll find mm, nothing in the laundry room except for laundry. The lock is a decoy. I may have mm. a handsome and youthful glow, but I wasn't born yesterday. Oh, uh, that was nice. That phrase was nice. Ten, <laughs> one, two. If you want to shoot him, you'll have to shoot me. Oh, fast. honey. Three, you'll have to shoot me too. They're just sweet. Oh, baby. Four. Baudelaire's. If he shoots us, he'll never get his hands on the Baudelaire fortune. There's still the baby. Five. I love this. I love this. You can choose. Not to pull that trick. Yes, and you can choose death by harpoon. Six. I don't know if it's going to work. Seven. Eight. I am so nervous. Uh, nine. You don't have to do this. He has. He's gone so... It's all I know how to do. Honey. Just, I am just. <sighs> I am just a sucker for. Oh my god, I don't know. No, I'm crying. Okay. <sighs> it's 
It's just that... I don't remember where I heard that from, but... I, maybe it was a show, or maybe I saw it somewhere. I don't know. But... I, I, I remember so something like that, and, and the quote was something like... Um... Once you, I mean, like, the situation is something like, once you start doing bad things, and bad things, and more bad things, and you continue on doing terrible, awful things, you start losing parts of yourself. And you start becoming a monster, just to put it simply. It doesn't mean that's all you are. It doesn't mean that it isn't hard for you. It doesn't mean that you were basically cornered into that position. It means that you always have a choice between the things that you can do. Bad things, good things, just in simple, simplified terms. But if you continue down the path of doing harm to others, causing others misery, of course it can be satisfying. It really can. Everyone's got someone that they hate. And you can go to the path of going ahead and making the people you hate miserable, of making everyone as miserable as you and dragging them to your level and I am not going to judge anyone who does that because I am not a saint I am not so I am not interested in judging that I just find it so interesting because it determines the kind of person that you are the things that you do the choices you make and if you continue doing bad bad things there comes a point where you are so irreparably broken and so feel with hate and rage and sadness that you just can't stop to do it anymore you 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 come to a point where stopping is no longer an option where you've gone and done so many terrible things that you know, you logically know that there's no coming back from that not for you and not for the people around you and I think this is exactly what Count Olaf is doing right now I've always had a feeling that there's more to him because he's just such an amazing character and I'm not saying that whatever happened in the opera or whatever happened in the past excuses his behaviors because it doesn't, but it explains them. It explains the kind of person he turned out to be. And I would love to get more information about that. But the thing is that Count Olaf has done so many, but so many terrible things that I don't think he's going to stop now because he can't and that is the, the, the way that he said that's all I know how to do that kind of broke me a little because Count Olaf is a character that you don't actually see vulnerable sides too often I think that I think that I can count with one hand the number of times that I've seen him in a vulnerable position, in an actually vulnerable moment for him. The, the, the moments that strike to me the most are the moment in the first season where uh, they were singing the song, the, um, uh, you know, 
I think that it was that part where he was singing something like The world is a pair of ill-fitting pants and other dire here that he disclosed And in the in that whole song he I don't know what it was but Maybe it was the way that he was looking at himself in the mirror or maybe it was just the things that he was singing and the way that he was singing that just made me feel bad for him. I think that, I don't know, it was just so melancholic. And then, of course, there was a part with uh, Madame Lulu where he was actually kind of, you know, like, what the fuck is going on here? And this time... Actually, I think that there was also a time with Jack. But... I don't think that he has an option. Anymore. And I don't think... That he thinks... He has an option. And when you are cornered... Like that... He is all alone. And I know that the way that he treats other people is terrible. It's awful. It's dehumanizing. But I don't know. There is just something so fundamentally sad about someone that is so broken so alone that the only way he has to prove himself to him is to do all of those terrible things and just hope that the end result satisfy him. So no, I don't think he has a choice, not really. So yeah, that whole rant was just about me trying to tell that that line. I don't know what else, I don't know. That's the only thing I, I know how to do. just so sad my poor little meow meow <laughs> uh, nine you don't have to do this It's all I know how to do. Oh, honey. <coughs> What's going on out here? Oh! Shit, he didn't! Good God, that man's been shot! There is an opera called La Forza del Destino, written by a composer named Giuseppe Verdi. The Forza del Destino, oh. an Italian phrase meaning the force of destiny. And destiny is a word he that tends to cause arguments among the people who use it. Some people think that a destiny is something that you cannot escape, like death or curdled cheesecake. Other people think that destiny is an invisible force that guides people through their lives as if they are simply characters. Motherfucker. In the opera, La Forza del Destino, <laughs> characters argue, fall in love, run away to monasteries, engage in duels, and drop a gun on the floor, where it accidentally goes off and kills someone. The opera is a tragedy, and so is the story of the Baudelaire's who are about to experience a similar incident. I said, good God, that man's been shot. The 
the consequences would ripple through their lives. Water in a pond. I'm just surprised that he didn't. I knew someone was going to die. I knew it. I knew it. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I am used to it by now. I knew it, like, I knew it. How else could that go? Other way, right? Like, the man was good, he was given the bottler's option, he had a baby in the way, he was married to Kate. Of course he was going to die. What did I thought? What did I expect it? I don't think that I've watched that opera. Um, but I know the trope, you know, of dropping accidentally or not so much accidentally a weapon, that being whatever it was, um, a gun, a harpoon gun, or whatever, and then that thing killing someone. Like, I knew the trope, but I didn't know where the trope come from. So, I always learn so much with this show. <sighs> of course the guy was going to die. Of course he was. Because he was about to retire. And we all know what happens to characters who are about to retire. They die. <sighs> Oh, the next episode is going to be a bloodbath, isn't it? Oh, God. So, <clears throat> so that answers the question about Kit and about why she was with the other brother, but because she was saying something like along the lines of give my regards to Frank I was like oh so she's meeting with Ernest and that doesn't make, make any sense because why would she tell them that he is bad so math wasn't really mathing in my head but you know if there is a third brother that would make sense now I really feel bad for her because she and Dewey really seemed to care about each other and really were excited about the baby and of course the guy was going to die because there are no happy endings not here and not now i have that song in my playlist just if you were wondering <laughs> I, I i am laughing because i i i am ignoring my pain okay is my coping mechanism just let me be I really just wonder how Kit is going to react to it. And yeah, I do love <laughs> the interactions between the three of them as a dysfunctional found family. But of course I knew that something was going to happen along the way because that just wasn't going to fly for so long. So it makes a lot of sense that... Esme and Olaf were kind of done with each other because the resentment and, you know, the problems were piling up again and again and again in all of the other episodes. And then with Carmelita in the picture, of course, that Count Olaf was just getting more and more frustrated. So it makes a lot of sense that the battlers were able to use that discontentment and that those problems explode them and just basically be the last nail in the coffin to break them apart and i think that that is going to 
be good in the long run because Count Olaf has no more allies. And again, all the things that I'm saying, I have a bittersweet taste in my mouth because I am happy for the bottlers because there are less problems for them. But I am also just... I'm just sad for Count Olaf, okay? I know that he's villain and all of those things, but I, I just feel bad for the guy, sorry. I am really empathetic. <laughs> uh, so I, I have been feeling kind of bad for him. Um, just... You know, yeah. Again, you guys know about my complicated relationship with Count Olaf. So... So yeah. I feel bad for him because he's all alone, even though he kind of did it to himself. You can't really blame him because I don't think that... Of course, he doesn't have... He, he doesn't have mental health, he doesn't have any friends, he is just a broken person. So, anyway. Uh, I don't think that Esme and Carmelita are just going to go like the hench people But I mean like I don't think so because Esme really seemed really um, You know Really looking forward to the sure bowl. So I don't think that she's going to disappear I think that she is going to kind of be a third party to the problem and that could be really problematic Because Esme is really smart Even if she was playing second banana So and then the two brothers, I... Yeah. And the last safe place and the library. And then we have Count Olaf's plan with the mushrooms. And then we have all of the rest resting BFD and people that knew the bottle layers in the hotel. So I don't think that that is going to go any better. And... I don't, I'm not really sure what how, where Lemony Snicket is taking them So or if he's going to stay there. I'm not really sure and then we have the whole thing with the quagmires being Well, basically shut down but by cross and Then we have the thing with the sugar bowl and then we have the thing about the uh, man with beard and no hair and woman with hair but no beard And I don't I'm not really sure what that is going to be about because we haven't seen them in about six episodes maybe a little bit less maybe maybe four episodes so i just wonder what they're doing because i am more terrified of them than i am of count olaf but count olaf is nearing that point where you have nothing left to lose and just in general he in all of the show, he hadn't had a lot to lose to begin with, so I think that I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what what what's going to happen. It's just. Oh wait, I am I am just noting that there were clues in this in this scene right here about the third brother because this first one. I'm not really sure who it was. Let's just say that he was Frank, right? And he left. And then he comes the second one, and let's say that he's Ernst, just to... Yeah. Just for the laughs of it. And then he leaves again, and then there was another person, right? So... Yeah, and I just had a lot of fun with all of the characters that continue to appearing, and I have to say I love Esmes nails i in general i love her style she has an iconic style but those nails i i want them i want them i need them <laughs> and i just loved to see all of the different characters that we saw in the other seasons come back for this one it was just such a nice treat and of course there were a lot of clues about the third brother but i was just so concentrated <laughs> in other things to actually notice that and we have of course the clock that says wrong that spoilery clock and i just find so very interesting the fact that this show basically spoils itself a lot of the time but in a great interesting manner i don't know and we get to see Babs again, which is not 
in a relationship with Jerome, I really want to see who he is referring to in the in the lumber mill because I can think I mean like of course there are two options <laughs> I hope he's not with sir just you know because that would have been like oh Jerome no I hope that it's the other guy but okay and then of course I totally forgot about that Count Olaf killed Laurie he's 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 food now. He's yeah. And we have the whole preparations to capture the sugar bowl, and we still don't have any answers because whenever someone is going to ask, of course, um, of course, of course, we don't get any answers. We are not close, but we know that there's something in the sugar bowl. The sugar bowl belongs to Esme, but not whatever it is inside. I'm not really sure what it's inside, but I'm going to assume that it has to do something with the fun guy that Count Olaf is about to use as a bio biological weapon, because or, or something. Maybe maybe it's like an antidote, or maybe it's like I don't know what it is. But he said that he can't release the fun guy until he has the sugar bowl, which makes me think that maybe it's some sort of. Um, some sort of you know um cure for the for the fungi or something i don't know and uh, we still don't know what exactly happened with hook and fiona because they just escaped and i am really glad for that i'm pretty sure that they are going to be back in next episode and i am really worried about that maybe they went search for um for um their grandfather that was lost maybe <clears throat> maybe the grandfather knows about a way to cure the infection caused by the fun guy i'm not really sure poor larry that was an awful way to go by the way <laughs> um what else what else what other loose ends we have Oh yeah, we still don't know where Jacqueline is, right? And we still don't know what is going on with the man with beard and no hair and the woman with hair but no beard. Uh, we know about their plans, but we, we really don't, don't know what they're doing right now. So that worries me a lot. And I think that that is it. Pretty much, yeah. I love to see Justice Strauss because she's amazing. And we of course have the whole thing with the... Um, trying to get Count Olaf behind bars that I don't think is going to work. Because this is a sad story, so... Again, I don't think that Justice will win the day. Well, we'll have to see. We have the reunion of the siblings, and I really don't want to face Kit in the next episode because she's going to be devastated. And this time, Count Olaf didn't do it. Like, this time, he was innocent. <laughs> I rest my case, Your Honor. Yeah, he was threatening to kill them. And yes, he was basically holding a harpoon gun into their faces, but my client is innocent this time around the other five murders okay uh, he was not so innocent but this one he had basically nothing to do with it i could even say that the bottlers didn't have anything to do with it it was just you know like the opera it was probably destiny it was gravity and destiny and everything around I think that those are the only loose ends that I can think of. Because all of the other characters are dead. Or soon to be. I really want to rewatch this show once I finish watching it for the first time. Because I think that so many things are going to be answered. 
that time around. All in all, it was a pretty damn great episode. I cried like about three different times. I am not ready for the season finale. I am really not. I want really much to know what's in the damn sugar bowl because I need answers, I need explanations, I need all of the answers and all of the explanations. But I love this episode so fucking much. And hey, it made me realize that Count Olaf is actually my favorite character. Again, not that I don't love all of the other characters, be characters because I think that all of the characters, even the bad ones, have these sort of, I don't know, interesting stories and interesting designs and characteristics and just charisma. And it makes you pretty much like everyone in a weird, weird way. I think that the people that I don't like can be counted with one hand. And maybe they were, I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I didn't really care for the oculist, the, 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 the girl oculist doctor. And maybe the crow people, I didn't care about those guys either because they were bloodthirsty. But other than that, I think that I pretty much care about everyone. Anyway, if you enjoyed this reaction, don't forget to leave a like or a comment. Anything you want would be highly appreciated. And if you want to know when I upload the reactions, I'm going to leave you my Patreon account in the description box down below and feel free to check it out. I think that that's it. So we'll be seeing each other on the next reaction. Bye!